Okay, folks, we're starting up lesson three here. Um, and what I'm going to focus on with this is primarily going through the start of the Antigone essay, how to get things going on it. Um, and it's a little bit, probably a little bit different than maybe um, some of the ways you've uh, learned to write essays. But I'm going to show you a way to approach it that will allow you to develop analysis far better um, than other methods. Okay, so I'll go through that. Now, a few things I want to show everybody with the classes. Um, is I'll go to the calendar for a bit just so everybody sees where we are. Um, I like to check in on this um, just to keep everybody up to date. I've taken the paragraphs out. You will not be doing paragraphs this semester, um, this uh, winter session. Um, again, a bit of a long story, but um, some of the uh, just rewriting those assignments wasn't working as well. So we're just going to take those out. Haven't heard any complaints on that, so I'm assuming everybody's okay with that. And we're going to focus on the essays, okay? So work with me on that. <clears throat> you should be posting your summaries. You should have gotten your summaries posted for scenes one and two, and then scenes three and four. Today, you'll be posting your summary of scene five. So get those done, and once you've gotten all those done, you're gonna see that you've basically done all the groundwork to start writing your essay, okay? So the big thing with those um, summaries is you write the summaries of the scenes, one and two, then three and four, and then five, and that teaches you the entire play in pretty good detail. But you also should have been pulling up three metaphors out of scenes one and two, and then out of scenes three and four, and then out of scene five. So three metaphors from each of those distinct areas, okay? Um, and that should have given you some interesting lines. Usually the metaphors are more interesting um, than other parts of the um, play, which are usually kind of straightforward. So let me go through what we're going to do with that. And um, all of that, once you get it all done, and you should finish it today, and be able to start on the essay over the weekend. And again, I know I'm really hitting you pretty hard with this, but we've got to finish 16 weeks worth of work in six weeks. So we've really got to get at this first essay because um, we got uh, three more essays after it and um, I'm going to walk you through it. Okay, so let's first go to the assignment sheet. Let me take you to that first. Um, the assignment sheet is up. It's right up here. Okay, this is for the essay. Now I'm going to walk you through it a little bit and then I'm going to come back to these things, which you don't absolutely have to do. But I'm telling you, if you do them, life's going to work a little bit better for you, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at the assignment sheet. Um, now, one little thing I'll, I'll tell you. Um, generally, assignment sheets are written with the idea of the final draft in mind, okay? Um, they don't walk you through um, the early draft stages. That's what they don't do usually. They usually just pay attention to the final draft stages. And that's very important because most students don't know how to get through the early draft stages of an analytical essay. And I'm going to walk you through that. So this um, assignment sheet really walks you through what I'm looking for in the end. And that's what most assignment sheets do. Okay, so let's go through this. Um, <clears throat> so um, here's our lesson today, uh, or here's our assignment sheet. Ancient Greek drama, that's what we're doing. This is our first essay. And we're going to write a six-paragraph essay on Sophocles' Antigone. Okay, just so we understand the math here, six paragraphs means introduction, four body paragraphs, and then a conclusion. That's a six-paragraph essay. Introduction, four body paragraphs, then a conclusion. So, okay, so everybody understands that. I don't have an absolute page number on it, but just for a way of thinking about this, Generally, a paragraph in an analytical essay or any good essay is about three quarters of a page. Ultimately, this should add up to about four to five pages in length, possibly as much as six. If your essay is coming out to three pages, you should develop it more. It's probably underdeveloped. Okay, so develop more with more detail, insight, and everything else. Okay, so um, so six paragraph essay. Just so you know what I'm looking for is going to be about four to five pages, maybe as much as six, but generally four to five, okay, of writing. Um, then there's the work cited at the end. I'll talk about more about that on Monday and Tuesday. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to isolate specific points in the play that deal with loyalty and justice, show how the words, I should say words and phrases, provide an insight into the natures of loyalty and justice. 
do not try to cover the entire play. So we're not writing a summary. This should be telling you, um, when I say things like isolate and show other words, provide an insight, you should be thinking this is an analytical essay and all the essays are going to be that way. But when you're outside of this class and you see those kind of markers, you should be thinking analysis, not summary. You're not going to summarize the entire play and cover all the characters. You're not going to do that. You're going to focus on certain aspects and give insight into those parts of it. Okay? And just forget everything else. So do not try to cover the entire play. Focus on one point at a time. And I give some possible scenarios here, such as the relationship between Antigone and Ismene, or the relationship between Creon and Haman, or you can do the relationship between the messengers and Creon, or between the chorus and Antigone, or between Antigone and Creon, or, or just on Ismene. You get your own focus, and you go after that. You can just write your whole essay on Ismene. You can do that or just on Creon or Haman. Get your focus, okay? So I gave you possible scenarios. You do the one that interests you most, okay? Don't worry about what I think. Do the one that interests you most. Get that focused first and foremost, okay? You've got to get that first and foremost and you're gonna push everything else aside. By this time, you should have finished the play and kind of know what you like and what you don't like about it and what you wanna do, okay? Your analysis of the play, right there you should know this is an analysis, okay? Must be focused on, based on a close reading of the words Sophocles uses, and you must provide an insight in how the words give insights into the um, theme you are working on. So in other words, how do the words of Creon um, show us something about the nature of authority or justice, or how does um, Antigone go into loyalty or things like that, or with the afterlife with the, um, with the gods? Um, some kind of insight into that, okay? So I go into here format. Now, I'm going to kind of skip this over and not go into all this right now. Formatting is all a final draft stage concern. That's what it is. I will come back to this on Monday and uh, early Tuesday, okay? And I'll go into MLA and all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to jump right in and write your final essay in one draft, you can go ahead and pay attention to this. I'm in this video going to go into how you get through the early draft stages and how to go through those other documents that I've posted. So if you want to just go ahead and write your essay and be done with this, go ahead and just follow that format and do all that. Warning though, um, um, what people usually do is they trip over themselves because they didn't follow some of the early draft stage concerns. And, uh, and I'm doing this, uh, approaching it this way, because most of the essay assignments that you're going to get in the future are essentially like this one I've written for you. They focus on what I expect as the end product, the outcome. Okay, I expect a good essay that really gives analysis into some of these relationships and some of these themes, and you can focus it how you want to. You want to focus it. And I um, go into the format here. Um, but really what you're going to need to do is work out a draft process that works for you and everybody does it a little bit differently. I'm going to walk through one that generally works well for students. Generally works well in my experience. I've been teaching for now almost 25 years and yes that long. Kind of scary. <sighs> Got to catch my breath. Okay so I've been teaching this long and I, I've come up with a way that um, I think really works well for students based on the research I've done and based on my own experiences with students and based on my own experience going through as a college student. Um, a lot of people don't know this. I struggled in college a great deal and even got kicked out of college. Yeah, I did. Um, and got my way back in and everything. And I got pretty darn good at this college thing. In fact, I went on and got straight A's in graduate school and other things. Um, so I got good at it, but I struggled at first. And it's because I didn't understand the early draft stages. And folks didn't really know how to help me with it. So I ended up doing research on it and finding out more and got better as a student, struggled, but I got it going. And now I'm just going to go through this approach that is based on good research, based on my own experience, but really it's based on the experience of students I've worked with. And I'm going to walk you through it. So you don't have to do this, but I strongly recommend it. Okay. So you don't have to go through what I did. Okay. So we're going to start through the Antigone essay. And what I'm going to do, let me walk you through this. These are the general principles of what I'm going to walk you through. Read the assignment sheet carefully. That's what we just did. Okay. 
And you've also, I should even have it up here, read Antigone carefully. You've all, all done that, okay? Um, find the evidence for the body paragraphs. Now, that might be a little bit odd for some of you because many of you come up with a thesis and then find the evidence. I want to reverse that process entirely, and you're going to see why by the time we get done with this. I want you to first um, know where we're going. You, you kind of know this is going to be um, an analysis, and that you have to focus it. But I want you to not focus on your thesis. I want you to just put that aside and find the evidence you want first. And that evidence is probably going to be is probably going to come from the metaphors that you've already discussed at the discussion board. Okay, and I'm going to give you this is my rule of thumb. Here's my thumb talking right now. My thumb is you don't have to do what he says. He's he's not the world's smartest thumb. Okay, um, but he has pretty good advice. Um, Generally speaking, evidence that's three to six lines in length works best because it gives you enough to work with but not too much. My experience is that students give themselves too little to work with. One to two lines is not enough to develop a body paragraph. You generally need three to six lines to give you enough evidence to really develop a case for something. Okay, so find those three to six lines and find something that's interesting, that's kind of quirky and kind of weird. Those quirky, weird, odd quotations generally provide the groundwork for the most interesting and insightful essays. That's what they do. So get that odd stuff that's about three to six lines, okay? And that's what we're going to work on first. I'm going to come to that and how we're going to work with those with those assignment sheets. Then we're going to describe the words and phrases carefully and we're going to go into that. So let me take you to back to the assignments. Um, let's go to this. Now, Here's let me, let me show you that something's a little bit different. This helps you, and this kind of guides you through. It's a bit of a, as I, they like to call it, um, scaffolding. It's a terrible term, but whatever. Um, these really have helped students out. Now, and that's this one right here. Walks you through the first draft, um, early draft stages. And you open this. I would encourage you to download this onto your computer. Hit the download, put it on your computer, and everything and I've got one myself download it onto your computer and work from it that way okay so you download it this way you do that um, it puts it on your computer here it is and then I can open it up and then I you know save it on my computer I really need to save it on my computer itself um, so save as and then I can save it on my um, desktop so uh, yeah, that I already got one on my desktop, so that's why it's kind of being difficult with me. Let me get that one I've already got open up on my desktop. Here it is. Um, that is not it. Here it is, right here. Here we go. No, that's Antigone. I'll come back to that in a bit. Here it is. Okay. Now, you know it's on your desktop when you see this lavender line up top. Okay? That is the PDF file sitting on your computer. So you've got to download it onto your computer and open it from your computer and you know you got it when you got that lavender line on top <clears throat> and then this walks you through it so this says five paragraph essay it, it, it is a six okay that's an error I'll see if I can correct that right away and it walks through how you're gonna do this you're gonna be writing an, an introduction and everything else that's all clear um, well, this walks you through right here what you're gonna do with the early draft stages and it creates a lot of issues, a lot of problems. And you'll notice I don't talk about grammar and I don't talk about format in here. I say write out your quotation of three to six lines at the top of each page. This is what you're going to do, is put your quotation right here. Now, this doesn't look anything like an essay at all. This is how you work on a rough draft. Okay. Um, and so what I'm having you do is early on find your evidence. That's what I'm asking you to do in this this sheet, this worksheet right here. This is really a worksheet for the early draft stages. We're going to get to the final version in a bit, but be patient and go through this early draft stage and get your first quotation from around, from, and again it's around three to six lines, from around 1 to 3.30 of Antigone. And notice I'm spreading out the quotations. And then on the next page I'm going to have you get a, a quotation from 3.31 to 6.65. And then one from 657 to 1042. The last one I made a bit of a boo-boo and I didn't give you lines. Okay, that was my mistake. 
but quotation of three to six lines from the end, from somewhere in Act 5. Okay, That spreads your ideas throughout the play of Antigone. That's what it does. So get your quotation. So I'm going to just do one of the paragraphs here. And, and I'll do it in front of you. And again, a part, part of my, this is going to be really tedious. But stick with me. If you take time with the early draft stages, the later draft stages work so much better. I like this quotation, was, which was early on, around lines 22 to 27. And this is Antigone talking to Ismene. Um, and she says, That is what they say, and our good Creon is coming here to announce it publicly. And the penalty stoning to death is the in the public square. That's I the public. says I the public square. That's a typo in this. That's why it's free. I the in the public square. It says squirrel. Okay. God, that's kind of funny. There it is. And now you can prove what you are, a true sister or a traitor to your family. And again, I apologize for the typos in this. That's how it was published, and that's why it's free. Um, I try to respect copyright law. So it's a free copy. So get that quotation. Let's copy it. And let me walk you through this. And again, I don't know what I'm going to say about this quotation, but I like it. Because this is weird. This is um, Antigone putting this meaning on the spot. There it is. And let me fix it up a little bit. You don't have to. Um, I'll fix it up, make it look a little bit more like the quotation it is. Um, <clears throat> And we know these are typos in the public square. Um, public squirrel, that's funny. Okay. And these, I would urge you to write down um, the lines from the beginning. Okay. Now, normally you put page numbers there, but this copy doesn't have page numbers. This goes by lines. We will come back to that. MLA normally does page numbers, not lines. The exceptions are with the Bible or with um, uh, Shakespeare. But we're going to make an exception with this one because it doesn't have page numbers in the text. Okay. Now I took the quotation. We're building these our ideas from the evidence. What I have you do right after you get the evidence for one of your uh, pages, one of your paragraphs, is I have you describe the quotation carefully. Pay attention to the words and phrases used by the speaker. I'm going to write this right here with the cameras rolling, so to speak, and it's going to be a little rough, and I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. But let's see what happens. Um, Antigone, I'm going to make typos and everything else, and you guys are going to see why I got kicked out of school at one point in my life. Um, Antigone is challenging um, Ismene to take either her side or the side of Creon um, because, here's my typos, because she sees herself as being on the side of her, um, of their brother, of their brother, um, Polynices. I'm misspelling Polynices um, and everything, and I'm misspelling because still, because I can't spell. Um, <clears throat> I don't worry about the typos, okay? I'm not going to worry about them right now. Um, um, she points out that Creon is about to announce this uh, um, a new law that makes helping their that makes burying I should say burying their brother a um, a crime that could um, be punished by death. Um, in the public square. Notice what I'm doing. I'm describing what she's saying. Why this is important is I want you to see what I'm seeing from my eyes. So good analysis, and this is something, I, again, I'm going to keep repeating. Good thinking is slow thinking. I'm actually dissecting these words and phrases to let you see what I'm seeing. And that's going to help me analyze it. I'm going to get be able to take say some really neat things about this once I've really torn it apart. Okay, So it's in the public square. She, um, Antigone, is 
And I, I should say, some of this is, strikes me as bad writing. I want to be clear about this. Challenging and challenging. I shouldn't be doing that. Whatever. I'll clean it up in the middle draft stages. So you challenging as being a and private over a law that is about to be made public. Okay. So I'm just noting that. Now I'm thinking right now, that's actually important. This is going to create a problem. And it's going to become a public problem. She's setting up this public problem privately. She knows how this is going to play out. It's not going to be good for anyone. And there it is. Now you can prove what you are, a true sister or a traitor to your family. Um, Antigone is acting as if the decision is up to Ismene and that her decision I, I'm not going to worry about the type of decision will make her either loyal to her family or disloyal to her family. Um, <clears throat> Now, what I'm, I, I'm now just thinking about this right now. I'm coming up with ideas, and all I've done is describe it. And notice, I, I'm not going to worry about the typos and anything else. I'm just putting that out there, even though it looks kind of goofy. I have ideas now. Now, most of you know I'm not a big fan of Ismene, I mean Antigone, because I think she's a bit of a drama queen. That's me. I know many of you probably like Antigone. And you've got good reason for it, and you can hold on to those ideas. Don't worry about what I think, okay? Really. Um, I don't even care what I think. Um, <clears throat> why are these lines important? Okay. Antigone is um, setting up a crisis for both um, her sister but also for Creon publicly. That's, that's what I'm noticing. Um, she's creating a public crisis for both of them. And these are personal issues, not, um, she's making them into public ones. So I see her as being orchestrating the crisis that's going to drag in Ismene in the city. So. Just little, showing no concern for their views. She has already set up this plan without consulting with anyone else. Now, and again, that's my analysis. That's why I think these lines are important. That's my analysis. What we've done with this, or what I've done with it, and with all the bad writing in there, I've got the backbone of a body paragraph. That's what I've got. If I tried to write a final version, and this is something I did not realize before, how selfish she is with the plot and how she's actually setting up a crisis. I didn't realize that before, even though I've been teaching this play for a long time. I had other views um, about it. I just came up with that right now because I came up with this quotation. Notice I'm building my insights from the ground up, from the evidence up to the insights. Everybody starts off with ideas about the play. Put those aside, get the interesting quotations, and then start to analyze them, start to discuss them in detail, and you're going to get your analysis. That's what I've done here. And what I'm going to do is then do that for another quotation. Get the quotation, three to six lines. Don't underquote, don't be shy and get one line quotations. Get three to six lines. My thumb is watching. Okay. Then describe it, walk through it, and then explain why it's important. Okay, um, And then do that for another quotation and another quotation. What you're going to have is the meat and potatoes of an early draft stage. Okay, You're going to describe those words and phrases carefully. Allow the reader to see what you are seeing. It slows it down and dissects those words and phrases. That's what we did. 
And then at the end, the analysis of why these words are important. Stick to the quoted passage. Don't go off somewhere else and start summarizing what Haman's saying or anything else. Or if you're quoting from Haman, write about Haman. Don't tell me what the sentry said. Just write about Haman. If you're writing about the sentry, don't tell me what Ismene is saying. Write about what the sentry is saying. Okay? So work from that evidence, and that'll really generate some good ideas. Okay? Now on the second draft stage, I'm just going to mention it really quickly, and I'm going to show you what we have up here. Um, so working from the evidence here, let me get rid of this right here, and let me go to the other sheet that I have posted up there. Um, <clears throat> this is right here, Antigone second draft. If you do the first draft one, you download it onto your computer, and then open it from your computer. Don't work with the, the version that's within the web browser. Download it onto your computer and then open it from your computer. Okay, so we do this. We click on the second one. Right now it's not open on my computer by the way. It's open in my web browser. Okay, so what we want to do is download it onto the computer. This is the second draft stage. So I'm downloading this. Let me show you this. Um, I want to make sure everybody knows this. I'm downloading it now onto my desktop. Um, so I downloaded it onto my desktop. And let me show you what I'm doing here. And then I open it. Here it is on my desktop. I open it on my computer. Okay. And do that with the first and second draft. And the second draft stage, it repeats kind of the topic. You're not writing a five paragraph essay. That's an error on my part. My apologies. You're doing six. And then what it walks you through, it looks like it's the same thing. It's not. Notice what we're doing is now we're setting the context of the quotation. Now what it's doing is asking you to set the context of that quotation. So you're setting up your topics. You're doing what's often called your topic sentences in the second draft stage. We didn't do that in the first draft stage. Uh, what we wrote was just content, ideas. That's what we were focused on. Now we're going to make it look more like a body paragraph. Notice we haven't written the introduction or thesis yet. Now you write, okay, um, Antigone, uh, Antigone and Ismene are discussing the recent conflict between Polynices and Eteocles. Um, for control of the city. Antigone puts Ismene in, um, let me spell it correctly, a difficult position by forcing her to take sides. So I, I've written a couple sentences. I could write maybe one or two more. I set the context. And then I can put my quotation here. Okay, I can take that quotation from um, from my early draft. Let's get to it um, right here. And so I can get um, what I'm looking for from here. And so I can take that quotation. Is this redundant? Yes. Slow thinking is good thinking. The Emperor Augustus used to say, uh, "Festina lente." Um, make haste slowly. Um, rewrite the quotation. Here it is. So I copied and pasted it. And this one says rewrite and, re rewrite and revise the description from the first draft. Well, that's right here. I did it right here. And we know it was kind of badly written, not just the typos, but it's in choppy sentences. I can copy and paste it, and then I can start working on making it sound a little bit better, making it just a little bit more detailed. And Antigone is telling Ismene um, at the beginning of the play, I like that, that sets it up a little bit better. Antigone is challenging Ismene to take either her side or the side of Creon. Um, and um, don't worry about that, that's one of my fans calling. Because she sees herself as being on the side of their brother Polynices. Probably should spell brother right. Um, and you can see what I'm doing. I can go through and develop this. She points out that Creon is about to announce a new law that makes burying their brother a crime. Um, for anyone in 
the city um, and they and see you can see I'm just developing it more they could be punished by death in the public square and so I'm revising it now making it a little bit better what you should not do in these middle draft stages is add a lot more a lot of more sentences develop what you've already written develop what you have already written you usually don't need to add more sentences you might do it here and there but develop what you've already got most people in the early draft stages write in choppy sentences so oops I didn't mean to cut that let's actually undo that I wanted to copy it um, and so now it's just having me redo everything I did already and I can just revise it and refine it Antigone is setting a crisis for both her sister and also for Creon um, Antigone is setting a personal crisis I want to make there is a personal crisis and then a public crisis personal crisis for her sister for her sister Ismene Ismene by challenging her to declare her loyalty to their brother comma but she is also but she is also um, setting up a public crisis for Creon by planning to undermine his law even before he has announced it. Now notice what I've done is I've developed my analysis. It's better now. And that's what you want to do. Don't think you can come up with great points and great sentences the first time through. You're not going to do it. <clears throat> it. Just doesn't happen. Your brain doesn't work that way. It sketches things out first of all and really short choppy sentences and then you can go back to those short choppy sentences and add on to it. You can add a sentence here or there in these uh, middle draft stages but generally what you should do is refine what you've already done and what this second draft stage does is that same thing for the second body paragraph set the context again read just copy and paste that quotation over here then copy and paste that description and then revise it that's all you got to do and then copy and paste that analysis and then revise it and you can see I could keep doing that for the first body paragraph I could keep doing that now I'm gonna have something pretty dang good and those are the four elements that any body paragraph are, are going to be clear in the second draft stage you always set the context you always have a um, quotation some kind of evidence you always describe that evidence and you always analyze it all analytical essays all of them in their body paragraphs have four elements set the context have the evidence describe that evidence analyze that evidence okay that's what we're doing here okay so the second draft stage gets you to get all of those elements there and then what I have at the bottom of this draft sheet after you've done it for all of those well actually I don't have it for the um, introduction or actually I do this one right here it says right here bring the analysis together from the body paragraphs into one thesis it's basically asking you to look back at those bottom boxes that's your analysis for body paragraph four that's your analysis for body paragraph three your body paragraph um, one well I guess I skipped over one um, so it asks you to bring together the analysis from all of the body paragraphs into one thesis statement so you're putting it all together now you're still in the draft process and then bring the analysis together from the body paragraphs into one thesis statement so you're going to revise it again so you write the thesis one time and then write the thesis statement again expect to be revising your thesis statements more than once and then you write this, basically map out your body paragraphs here this is going to summarize all the body paragraphs right there what you're going to have after you finish this second um, um, after you finish this second version you are going to have a good all the elements of a bot of an essay and then we're going to put it together on Monday okay so I apologize that this is a really long video but boy will it save you time as you're writing that essay and it's going to show you how to write analytical essays okay 
So I, I go through the second draft stage here. You're going to add your context to each body paragraph. You're going to refine what you've done, make them sound better, check for choppiness, all that kind of stuff. And then you're going to write your introduction and bring the analysis together in a thesis. Okay, That's what you're after. Okay, So I hope that's clear what we're going to be going through. You do not, I'm going to make this clear, you just have to write an essay. Okay, and If you want to, just write your essay. Okay, You just go to that essay assignment and write the essay according to what I've got there and don't worry about this, these drafts. Okay, Don't worry about them. If you think you can do it. I'll tell you right now, most students cannot. About 90% of students benefit from walking through this, slowing it down and walking through these draft stages. Go through that and then I'm going to come back on Monday and show you how to put it all together and you're going to see how it's all going to fit together and you're going to say, hey, that works. Going through those stages makes it a little bit easier. Okay, So take care, folks. I'll see you again on Monday.